Hello and welcome to my introductory tutorial video for Fleece. Let's get right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do with Fleece is import it to Unity. Either drag in the .unity package you got from itch, or import it from the asset store. All imported folders are necessary except for the sample folder and the documentation folder, but for the sake of this tutorial you should probably import them anyway. Now that Fleece has been imported to Unity, it's time to open the Fleece editor window. You'll find it under Window Fleece. The sample story will be there by default, but we're going to create our own, so set it to none. To create a new story, just right-click anywhere in the project folder, then go Create, Fleece, Story. And give your story whatever name you want. In this case, it will be My Story. And then if you drag that into the Story field in Fleece, we can get started creating new passages. To create a new passage, right-click anywhere in the editor and a context menu will appear. If you click New Passage, a new passage will be created. In the Passage Inspector on the left, you can assign a title and assign text. One of Fleece's core components is the Jumper class. Jumpers are used to connect story text to game text, such as a text mesh. Here I'm using the included generic Jumper component to connect the passage we made to a text mesh I just set up. This Unity event needs to be configured to actually set the text from your passage to the text mesh. Here if you drag in the text mesh and make it so that during editor and runtime it sets the text, then suddenly the text from your passage in the fleece editor becomes synced with your game's text mesh. You can even edit text right on the component itself, and it updates the exact same text in the Fleece Editor. This can be a much more convenient way to edit text in certain games. On that note, you can actually create a new passage straight from a jumper. If you set the selected passage to be nothing, you can type in a new title, and just click Create a New Passage, and a new one will pop up right in the editor. And you can edit the text right from the component too. Now that you have multiple passages, it's about time to get started organizing them with folders. To create a new folder, just right-click to bring up the context menu and click New Folder. You can rename the folder just like you can rename a passage. And you can drag a passage right into a folder. Inside of a folder, there's a link back to the root folder, and you can drag a passage back to the root that way. Another core element of Fleece is the Drawstring class. You can extend the Drawstring class to function as a dialog box for your game. In order to start doing this, create a new c -sharp script and attach it as a component like we just did with jumpers. Make sure to use the fleece namespace when extending the drawstring class. And next, we're going to take the virtual methods and override them as override methods. And also, don't forget to actually make it an extension of the drawstring class. And I'm going to include a reference to the text rendering component too. And make it so that when set text is called, the text of that text renderer is applied. Here's some code that tells the draw string to continue whenever space is pressed. I'm also going to extend allow graphics so that if allow is false, the text mesh's text will be set to nothing. I'm also adding a little arrow that gets shown when text can continue. I'm also adding a jumper variable so we can actually tell the dialog box where to start reading. For this tutorial, I'm going to make it so that when you press B on your keyboard, dialog will begin at the jumper's passage. In a game, this begin method would instead be called by, for instance, walking up to an NPC and pressing the interact button to start talking to them. But we're not done yet. Draw strings have a method that needs to be called when text is done reading. This method is called on text done reading. For now, we're going to put it under set text because we're just using a normal text mesh that reads out text instantly. Here I'm pressing B to begin, and then pressing space when the continue indicator is visible to continue through dialog. And you can see when it gets to the end, it hides the text. So now you have a dialog box that can go through a passage one line at a time. But when it gets to the end, you might want to show choices to a player. In order to do that, I'm going to set up three text meshes and reference them within the drawstring as choices. Now by extending allow choices, we can make it so that when that code is set to true, it will only show the amount of choices needed, otherwise it will hide all of them. Make sure to use the available links variable when iterating through a for loop to do this. 
I'll be getting through why you do this in the next section of this video. And to actually select the choices, I'm just going to hard code it so that if you press 1, 2, or 3 on your keyboard, it will pick choice 1, 2, or 3. In another game, you might want to have this selected by a selection menu instead. I'm just keeping it simple for the purpose of this example. Also, make sure that make choice and continue don't get called at the same time. I do that with an else if statement here. Now we have a system set up to show choices in our game. It's about time to actually make those choices in the fleece editor. You can create links by clicking to make a new passage. I'm going to make a few passages here. And then if you right click on a passage and select new link, it'll create an arrow and clicking on another passage will create a new link right to that passage. Then on the original passage, you can rename your links to be whatever you want the text to be in your game. I'm also going to make it so that in addition to showing this text, it's going to show the number of the choice being shown. And now in our game, if I hit B to start, space to continue, there's our three choices. If I press 1 on my keyboard, it selects choice number 1. And to repeat, B, space, choice number 2, B to reset, space, choice number 3. So now we have a dialog box that shows choices when it reaches the end of a block of text. But what if you want some of these choices to be not available based on different variables in your game? That's where variable tags come into play. If you go into Fleece's settings, and then check out the parser class, by default we use the Fleece default parser which just contains a list of bools, ints, and strings. You can completely customize this to your own liking. But here, I'm just going to add an extra bool variable for, let's say, has the player been splashed by a car driving by them today? Now to reference this variable in Fleece, I'm going to add an if statement like this. So if the player hasn't been splashed, then they're allowed to say, I'm having a great day. And you'll see as I check and uncheck this data, you can see it responding immediately. This is why we used available links earlier in the code. It's because the drawstring class knows that any link that's evaluated to not have text in it shouldn't be available as a choice. We can take dynamic dialogue a step further with what I like to call empty passage logic. Basically, if a drawstring gets to a passage that doesn't have text in it, it will automatically follow the first link that evaluates to true. Here I'm using an included custom command to check if the first time passage has been visited yet. If so, it will evaluate as true. If not, it will evaluate as false. Here I'll use not visited to invert that result. So now in your game, when you walk up to your NPC and press the interact button, all that you need to do in your jumper is to find that you're talking to the NPC, and you can just let your variables take over what passage actually gets shown. So here when I hit B, it goes straight to great to meet you, and when I do it again, it goes straight to nice to see you again. And it will keep going to nice to see you again on repeated attempts because the variable hasn't been reset. And that's the basics to getting started with Fleece. If you have any additional questions, don't be afraid to ask me either through my support form or through email. Thank you.